going to do a little shift now. We're going to move into a different section of our, our morning program, uh, which is going to be about big data and politics. Um, and I want to say this about our next speaker. One of the best things about being up at the Kennedy School last year for me was that I got to hang out a lot with my friend Nico Melli. Now, Nico is, uh, may not need introduction here. Uh, Nico has just published his first book, The End of Big, How the Internet Makes David the New Goliath. And for his talk today, which is going to sort of move us into this discussion about big data campaigning, I asked him if he would start us off by taking the long view, since after all, 10 years ago, he was really there at the beginning. Nico Melli. <clears throat> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm here to talk to you about the unwritten future of personal democracy. But to do that, I'm going to start with the past. In the beginning, there was move on. And move on sent emails, and it rained money. <laughs> Dave Karp's excellent book, The Move On Effect, he talks about how in 2008, Move On raised and spent $98 million with 21 paid staff. Probably my favorite line in anyone's bio ever is in Eli Pariser's, during his time leading move on, he sent 937 million emails to members in his name. And I thought, Eli, couldn't you have stuck around another two weeks to break a billion? <laughs> Ten years ago, ten years ago, this month, Howard Dean announced, June 23rd, 2003, Howard Dean officially announced he was running for president. That's right. To quote, to quote Clay Johnson, it was a scream. And we just, we just watched everything Move On did and tried to do more of it. Right? We just paid close attention, we just cribbed it. And in 2008 and 2012, the Obama campaign took it to a whole new level. This past September, in one month, they raised $181 million from 1.8 million people. That's exceptional. That's a transformation of American politics. Money is the milk of politics, and to change how you raise money, that's a big deal. But money's about more than politics. Money's about, or money, haha. <laughs> politics is about process. Politics is about discussion. Politics is about solving problems. Politics is about participation. That's, that's where this started. Move On came out of people's desire to participate in a way beyond simply voting. People were frustrated with the direction of the country's politics. They wanted to censure and move on. Howard Dean, the Dean campaign, came out of a similar sense of people's desire to participate. Howard used to say in his speeches, you have the power and promised we would listen. The campaign would respect what you said. It was your campaign. And in 2008, Americans feeling locked out of the Washington, D.C. establishment, frustrated by what was going on inside the Beltway, elected a whole new kind of candidate, a whole new kind of politician, Barack Obama, for change. Now, change is more than just putting in your credit card number, right? And all three of these, Move On, the Dean campaign, the Obama campaigns, all of them 
they're more than just big lists that raise money. They're more than just big lists that raise money. There was meetups and all kinds of community activities. But they're also mostly big lists that raise a lot of money. Mika White of Adbusters has an excellent critique called clicktivism. Right? He says, A-B testing is ruining democracy, is ruining activism and politics, leeching the soul out of it. Everybody should read it. It's a good critique. But I don't think A-B testing is evil. I don't think online fundraising is evil. It totally broke the way money had worked in the past in politics. I actually, I actually think A-B testing and online fundraising is awesome. Like this cat. But email list acquisition, email list conversion, online fundraising, credit card, A-B test, increase your response rate, higher yield, that's just not enough. That's just not enough. It's just the beginning. Everyone in this room and everyone watching online you're here and a part of this conversation in this community because you love technology and you love politics. But we got, we got a little bit of a problem that all of the money and attention and energy goes into winning. And that's, you know, that's the job. You got to win these elections. Whatever side you're on, you want to win. But that's not going to get us to a new politics. That's not going to get us to a new democracy. That's not going to get us to where we need to be. In the mid-70s, if I had asked you what a computer was, assuming you knew, you probably would have described something like this, a Cray supercomputer. It would fill a hotel room. Well, this is Manhattan, so maybe it filled two hotel rooms. And it costs about, base price of a Cray supercomputer in the mid 70s, five million bucks. It was really only available to the biggest institutions, big companies, big universities, the Pentagon. And today, 130 million Americans, not to mention the global stats, carry around a smartphone with a power equal to or greater than a Cray supercomputer of the 70s. That's an exceptional diffusion of power. That's an enormous amount of power that we're walking around with. That we're walking around with. Some of you may have seen this quote from Hammerbacher who ran data at Facebook. The best minds of my generation are thinking about how to make people click ads. Sometimes I feel like the best minds, my peers, are spending too much energy trying to figure out how to increase the yield on an A-B test to raise a little bit more money from a big list, how to get another you know, X number of emails in the door acquired. We need more than that. Our democracy demands it. We need to take it to 11. <laughs> and when I say we, I really mean you, all of you. We just listened, we just listened to uh, Lorelai and Steve and Talia and the amazing Kimberly, exceptional stories, all of them trying to figure out new ways of doing this. But I don't want that to be just about people on the stage. Mika and Andrew have lined up an incredible cast today and tomorrow of people trying to figure out new ways of doing it. But really, it's up to you. And if you leave here and squander that opportunity, it's bad news for all of us. On the Dean campaign, we lived in fear of if somebody took, one day, I just had this nightmare that one day, you know, Howard would give this speech about you have the power and we'd send out an email fundraiser and everyone would hit reply with an idea. And we'd be buried in replies. And I still worry about the total onslaught, the absolute volume that our leaders and our institutions have to deal with. We must figure out some solutions here. We got to figure out better ways of doing it. We have to build an infrastructure of participation 
We have to build process and politics that understand the new distribution of power. We have some very big problems. You've heard a lot about them already today. Everything from the vanishing middle class, the global youth unemployment epidemic, the climate change, and our existing institutions are not proving up to the task. And all this power we have, this power is useless if we can't figure out how to make it work better, how all of us can do our part. What we really need is personal democracy. For 10 years, this conference was founded with this idea that the technology was actually going to change the way we participate and engage with government. And if the greatest achievement after 10 years is that we can raise a lot of money in small dollar contributions, that is simply not enough. When I think about the task ahead of us, when I think about the future we must imagine together, it can seem daunting. But then I think about the founding fathers of the United States, a bunch of rich white guys without electricity whose only experience of the world was a hereditary monarchy. And they managed to imagine a process for politics and government that was thrilling, that built this nation. And that's the task that we have today. That's the task that all of you have. You have the power. Thank you.